Hey, Venetians, my name is Valentini, and I'm a class of TCCA. My number is 2500-04025. And today is a restatement video. And I hear the two out of five audio, and I'm going to explain the important point. The first audio is from the botany class. In the audio, the instructor wants to talk about the phyllotaxy, which is a scientific term that refers to the arrangement of leaves of stem of a plant. On most plants, leaves are arranged in the definite pattern to facilitate and help photosynthesis. There's a type of leaf arrangement called the alternate arrangement. In the diagram, with this type of arrangement, there's only one leaf on each node. At a node in the spot where the leaves adjust to the stem, it's a common arrangement the leaves of the stagger are alternated on the stem of the plant. Another leaf arrangement is the opposite arrangement. Here are two leaves at each node. And these two leaves are opposite each other on the stem. This type of leaf arrangement is the cause commonness of alternate arrangement with one leaf at each node, but it's still very evident, such as maple trees. The last arrangement is the whole leaf arrangement. This type of leaf arrangement is the least common of all. The whole arrangement consists of three or more leaves attached to the stall of the plant on the same node. Now, in a diagram, there are three leaves at the same node. But it's also possible for there to be more than three leaves at the same node, and will be still be considered a whole arrangement. And the second audio is from the gemology class. In the audio, the instructor was discussing four different styles of gem cutting, the cabochon, the table cut, the rose cut, and the brilliant cut. The first style of gem cutting is the cabochon. The cabochon is a round shape without facets. A cabochon can be a simple cabochon with a rounded top and a flat bottom, or it could be in a double cabochon, which is rounded on the bottom and the bottom. It was discovered early on the bottoms that harder materials of the diamonds could be polished gemstones, and many ancient cultures used this method to finish gems. The cabochon cut was a facet cut, which is flat to its cut into a gem. Next is one of the earliest styles of faceted gems, the table cut. And the drawings, you can see the table cut stone from the top and from the side. An interesting thing to note is the earlier stones fastened in a way that were not probably actually cut, but with polished to this shape. Its bottoms are harder stones such as diamonds. It does look like it was cut, but this stone was polished to this shape. Some stones, including diamonds, occur naturally in eight-sided double pyramids. To create a table cut for the eight-sided double pyramid, it's necessary only to polish the flat surface on the top of one side of naturally occurring eight-sided sinks. The next stage in the development of gem cutting is the rose cut. In a rose cut, a stone is actually cut rather than polished. This one is of the earliest method is pressing the inside surface on a diamond or other gem. To start from its name, it's supposed to look like a rose in the bloom. The rose cut involves cutting into 32 triangular facets on the top of the diamond and a flat surface on the bottom. The last step of the cut is the brilliant cut. The brilliant cut came into use after all the other styles. The brilliant cut facing on the sides and the top and also on the bottom. A step with a brilliant cut is the correct proportion reflects the maximum amount of light out through the top of the stone and it creates a stone that, as the name indicates, shines the most brilliantly. This style of stone is used quite often today because it's so reflective. And that's it for the restatement video. And that's it if you liked it. Comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.